All right, we are in the uh, Solar States Tournament. It's Monday's qualifying round. I'm probably going to just use this as a practice round. Maybe. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how the day goes. There's a bunch of holes here I think we have to make. So I think the scores are going to be outrageous this week. So we'll see what the deal is. We'll see what kind of adjustments we need to make and uh, go from there. So here we go. Enter. Yeah, I don't want to play Masters. I could play Masters, but I don't want to play Masters. I don't want to play Masters because I don't want to spend... I don't mind spending some good balls in the weekend round and doing the stuff, but I'm not interested in spending a single dime on Playdemic's game. They are making all their money off of the signs, so I don't need to give them any more of my money. That's the deal is... There's nothing wrong with moving up the scales. you got to learn how to play. I would suggest you stay in rookie until you get a banner or win something. And, you know, so that you've got the, the basics down and then you could move up the scale. R Pro has always been a, an iffy deal. You don't... When I first started playing, I played a few Pro and then I went to Expert because you get better prizes than Expert. And the deal with Pro is, but Pro... I think you have a better chance of winning in pro with with better with lower scores. You don't have to shoot 42 in order to win. Here we go. Hole number one. Hole number one. What is hole number one? That's the par four that we have to get. Now there is a rough bump that you can do here, and, and I and it just seems to me that it's like a minus number. It's like minus five or zero, or it's a very small adjustment for this rough bump. But I'm going to do the shot from here where I use a couple backspin and I swing it back around and try and get it to go to the cup. That's what I'm going to do. So in order to get that done, I need... I need... A three side spin ball and a bigger ball is better. Well, I could probably do it with a katana. Oh, I'm going to do it with a titan just so I'm not wasting any of my kingmakers. More side spins better, but you can get it down with a Titan. That is the bag. That is the bag. Let's roll. Let's roll. Hole number one. Well, I'm. I'm. I'm actually. I'm sitting down. I got. A, I got paper in front of me. I'm actually thinking. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it yet, but I am actually thinking about making notes as I go along. So I don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. So you get on a hole and you go, shit. I did a. I did a plus ten and. I was off just a little and then the next time you get there you go well, I'm gonna just do the plus 10 instead of going hey I did plus 10 and I was off I needed to add on like 0.1 or 0.2 I shot a video talking about these adjustments we represent them in percentages but I believe the variable on their end is just like a point so like if you had I did a video on the zero wind adjustment And I think in a lot of these holes, it's we're doing a percentage, but then we need to add on up like a 0.1 or take off a 0.1. Go watch it. Then you'll know. All right. Got plenty of room. Plenty of room. So it's 3.1 times 1.1 divided by 1.3. So I'm going to do 2.62 rings. And what I want to do is enough backspin to get me up there. And you could do this with a lower power ball so that you could get your red line back. But I got lots of Titans, so I'm going to use a Titan. I do. 2.62 rings. I should turn my grid on, too. That would help. There's 262. Exactly. Put some curl on it. Hitting it perfect. Too much curl. That's all right. That's all right. Let's turn my grid on. Where is my grid? Material Q. Test. The test pattern. You have to get an eagle on this hole. I can tell you that. If you don't get an eagle on this hole, you dropped one. And you're going to have a hard time recovering. This is the type of course that there's a ton of holes that we can make shots on. But... You need to pick those up in order to move yourself up. This is not one that it's like going to a par three and not getting your birdie. Now that is total bullshit right there. 
when you're circling around like that, the gravity well is pulling it in and it's not going to go around the hole three times and then pop out. Not unless it's a reverse funnel. That is total, like, I don't know what the deal is. Like, why, why are they being so cruel to their customer base? Somebody at Playdemic was like, man, this would be the coolest thing since sliced bread, man. We'll make it so we can swirl the cup and, well, that'll be a cool graphic. And the deal is, is that they, uh, do they not understand how gravity works? It's not going to swirl around the edge 15 times, three times. I think that swirled around the, that swirled around the edge at least two times, possibly three before it popped out. And that's just not possible. It's not. The cool th the thing is is that I just don't get it. Somebody came somebody came up with that, and you know that they got a pat on the back. Like, hey, they walk around and they go, hey, Gordon's the one that, yeah, Gordon's been a programmer here forever, and he's the one that developed that whole thing about swirling the cup, and he's got a little gold star above his name. And then the players on the other end. I was talking to Dale Appleby yesterday, and. We were talking about the signs, Eid. <laughs> and he was in the perfect spot in the fairway, way down in the fairway, perfect angle to the cup. Everything was perfect. Still in the, still had a great shot. Wasn't in the rough. It's a, it's a long second shot, but he was in the perfect spot for it. And as the ball, as the camera spun around to aim him towards the cup so that he knew what his direction was, there was a sign right there in front of him and he couldn't, he had to take a shot to get out from behind the sign. So you're hitting in the perfect spot. And I keep going back to the, the analogy, if you're a NASCAR, if you like auto racing, and auto racing around the track on the, the barrier between the track and the, and the spectators, they'll have signs for every freaking sponsor of everything. But they don't put signs in the middle of the track. They don't put them in the way of the event. I know, like every video, I bitch about that stuff, but like, do they just not get it? They just don't care about us. That's the deal. I just, they just don't care. All right. This hole right here, there's a ball issue thing. I'm going to try it. I'm not sure if I need to bring out a three power ball. We'll just go out there with what I got and we'll see. We'll see. And I'm going to do, I'm going to start off. I know that we need to do an adjustment here and I'm going to start off with a plus 10. And I'm going to take this, I want to take this, I believe I want to take this with a sniper. And now I just need to establish what kind of ball I need. So it's 1.1 times whatever the wind is. Am I in a sniper? No, I'm in a grizzly. I'm in max grizzly with a three power ball. So if I brought out a smaller ball, like a marglin, now I'm at minimum, man, that's not going to work. So I'm going to have to bring out I have to bring out the Titan. Four point three, four point seven three rings. four seven three hitting it perfect <laughs> with zero time left on the clock who and I barely 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 hit that rough barely hit it go back and rewind that video I mean I left myself I left myself some room there but barely hit that rough I, I I don't think there was a blade of grass. I must have hit the last blade of grass in the rough to get to that spot. And so with a three power ball, I could take on a tailwind day. I was in max club, max club with my grizzly. And with a zero power ball, I'm in dead mid mid club with my sniper. So I could use the sni I could use my sniper with a zero power ball on a pure sidewind day or any kind of headwind day. But if we've got a tailwind, 
and I want to use my sniper and I want to play it I'm gonna to have to bring out a bigger power ball so that I can hit it with my grizzly my sniper will be there but I wouldn't be able to work out the wind and I am not sure about that adjustment because like let's let's go look at that let's go look look looky looky my hub my hub sunshine glades let's look at that shot I can't watch it on the video here I'd have to stop in order to watch it so we'll watch it here what I don't I like this is much better than it used to be so it's 4.3 times 1.1 is 4.73 and I'm right there right there let's see how many rings I left myself yeah I would have only been able to work out about two miles an hour win with the Marlin hey my opponent giving me the Z hey, screw you dude Screw you. That's what pisses me off about some of these people. It, is th they're like, hey dude, you're taking all this time setting up the shot. <laughs> uh, yeah. Four, seven, three. Now let's see how close this is. Jeez, this is close. Perfect. Man, that was like right on the edge coming through there. Jeez. I'm, I th I think I set that up two rings off and I might want to set that up three rings off just so that it man that was that was total luck that it hit and came through there that is brutal brutal what kind of balls do I have here and that is a zero power ball I mean it doesn't get it doesn't get any uh I'm surprised they haven't come out with the minus minus one ball so Minus one power. <laughs> All right, what's hole number three? What is, what is hole number three? The first of the par fives. Now, the question is, is do I just lay up here or do I go over here, go over here? In order to do either one of these, you're going to have to, if you want to do this one, I really believe in Ricky, you'll have to bring out a top spin boost ball. And if you want to get over here, you can do it with a with a berserker, but we have to have a pure sidewind or a tailwind. We cannot do it with any headwind. The deal is with a berserker, the top spin really doesn't help you because it's all about getting to this spot where you can just get to that spot. And if we've got any kind of headwind, even a slight headwind, it's pushing against the ball so much you won't be able to get to the, it's, it will just be really hard to get to that spot. We'll see what which way's the wind which 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 way's the wind blowing. Ah, oh, we got a little teeny bit of tailwind, a little teeny bit. Do I? I don't really want to waste a top spin boost ball. The thing about hitting over to the left hand side is is if you get in if you play that let's say in the opening round and the qualifying round you got a tailwind but then in the weekend round you get a headwind you won't be able to play that shot so it, it's but you won't be able to play the the one with the top spin boost either so do i play just the regular shot i'm just going to play the regular shot i'll just play the regular i'll just play the regular shot and i'm going to bring a katana I want to bring a katana. Uh, so I get the distance on the other shot. I'll bring a Titan again. Titan. Titan. The king of balls. I think I can just do it with that bag right there. Right there. If you've got an upper, if you're hitting the shot off of the little island and going to the right, and you've got an upper developed extra mile or a upper developed APOC where it's got a bunch of top spin. Or if you bring out your big topper, you could, if you run all the tops in, you could overshoot it. You're not doing any overpower, but you could overshoot that. And it doesn't really take any much, any more top spin really than what you can get with a 
a rock. And I like to be dead center in the center in the middle of this. You can see where the ring it's starting to roll over. You can watch my white ring and it's starting to roll over right there. I want to be up where my I'm about a ring away from just like dead center in the middle of that island. 4.1. That'd be 4.4. It's 100% accurate. There's 4.4. Four. New max curl. One ring great to the right. I'm just trying to get up there in the shadow. And what was that? That's like four or five. I think that's five topspin. So if you brought, you're you're not really getting any more distance if you brought out a club that hits farther. But you can you could run potentially more topspin. So if you bring out an extra mile or an APOC, or if you've got a big topper that's got more distance, you could get up into that area. It's not. You only need to run about five topspin. I'm going to take this shot just straight up, just wherever the hell I'm at in my club, just a straight up shot, just so that I can see where I'm And it's always off. This angle over here, you're always in a great spot, and you always have a good look at the cup. But it's difficult because of the the way that the green, the, the topography of the green... And by getting all the way over there, I've cleared myself so that I don't have to worry about if I came in from this angle, I might have to put side spin on it and be really close to this rough. So I've, I've opened it up so that I've got a pretty straight shot. So I'm at minimum club. It's 2.3 divided by 1.2. It's 1.91 rings. You can see how it's dropping right at the very end. 1.91 rings. There's one, nine, one, exactly. Oh, fuck, and then I hit it 70 rings great to the left. Yep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And my opponent being more to the left in their landing spot there, they have opened it up so that they could do that rough bump. But from where they're at back here, the sand is right here, and I was over here, and they are right here. If they got closer to the to that sand, they could open it up so that they have a better shot for this rough bump where they can start off in here and they can try and bring it back around to the cup. Having a three-side spin ball, I think, is imperative if you want to do that rough bump, I don't think you can bring it around. You might be able to bring it around with the two side spin, but I think you need a three. And my opponent brought a three, but they did not want to do the rough bump. And I'm not a big fan of those types of rough bumps, those I type rough bumps, but it is there. And I know a lot of people that do it. I know a lot of people that take that shot. But the reality is, is like on a day like today where we've got even a little bit of tailwind trying to get over with a topspin boost ball, if you really want to go for it, the deal for me is, is in the qualifying round and the opening rounds, I'm not really interested in, like, tiebreakers do play a, a factor, but I'm not interested in spending that many balls, but like in the weekend round, the, the problem with that theory is, is that you get in the weekend round and then you've got a tailwind and you decide to bring out a topspin boost ball, what adjustment do we do on the other side? Because you haven't taken that shot. So if in the weekend round you decide that you're going to do it, you might have to go out there and practice at once. So you'll spend at least at least two balls. Well, three if you practice at one time and try and get, the, get it going. And here's the deal on that. Is if you go... Well, what you could do... What you could do, you see... Well, that, even that's not going to work because you don't know where you're going to end up over here on the other side and what kind of an adjustment you need. You'll have to, you could lay yourself up over here, but you'll have to take that shot at least one time just to see like what's possible over here on the other side. Bringing out a topspin boost ball. 
All right, well, we're on the next hole. We're on hole number four. We are on hole number four. Hole number four. All right. Which way is the wind blowing on this? We got a tailwind. I'm going to use a two power ball. Now, it seems to me that it carries just a little, like what's Tommy saying, 10%. I, I actually think it might be a 20 on this drive because if you bring out a three power ball, you've got a little teeny bit of a window right here. Now, I mean, a little teeny bit of a window and trying to come over and get your second bounce. You really want your second bounce because it's so far from here to there. You got to run topspin in order to get your get your second bounce there that if you miss it, you're like I said in the walkthrough video, you're definitely going to end up back here. It's going to overshoot it. I'm going to do I'm going to do a 20 because that's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to do 0.2 per per 1 mile an hour wind. 20%. And I'm going to take a I'm going to take an APOC because an APOC's got the max distance. You want to bring out whatever driver you have that has the max base distance. So if you've got an APOC that's in the 240 you want to bring it. You want to you want to give yourself as much room up there as you can. And I think that on any day where there's a headwind, you'll probably have to bring out a bigger power ball just to get to the area to give yourself enough room to work out the wind. But I think on a tailwind day, we can do it with a three power ball. And let me swap out this ball just in case. Just in case, because there seems like the duck hole here, we would need a five power ball. I'm gonna. I got my Titan selected, and a Kingmaker would probably, probably be better. Because I think you need the sides, but if it, let me let me tag. Let me tag that Titan. All right, I'm gonna take a Kingmaker, but if I don't need any more than two sides, then I'll drop down to a Titan. And I'm going to do a 20% adjustment times the wind divided by 1.3. Here we go. Here we go. And you can see I have, man, I, I barely have a window there. Barely have a window there. And I really don't want to leave the wind in. 2.5, it'd be 2.3 rings. That put me like right in there if I left the wind in. There's three top spin. If I left the wind in, man, that's going to push me up. I'm going to put two top spin. I probably should switch to a bigger ball, and I don't need, and I don't need that extra. Two, three. All right. All right. We'll take it from right there. We'll take it from right there. We're going to put some curl on it. Hitting it perfect. And we'll see if that... Uh, man, and I will tell you that while I'm on that side right there and you're like, yeah, you made it to the other side, look at the shit that's in front of me. It looks like the ocean. And normally you would take, like I... I'm a rapier fan. Normally you take your rapier out there and you'd run the top spin. You do not want to run your top spin through that shit. You want to put on backspin and get as close to the cup as possible. So that you don't have to roll through all that crap. And I don't even know if you ran your top spin if you could get the ball to go to the cup because it's going to be going up and down those hills and the ball guy will lose track. That would have been much better served by bringing out a four power ball so that I would have had more control over what I was doing. And I like my opponent spot a much better. Look at their, like they got a little bit of undulation, but they're in a much better spot. Much more better. Where am I on my club? There's Max, there's mid. I'm in mid club. Hey, hey. Hey, let's not get any of that side spin shit on there. Three, four, 
3.9 divided by 2.4 is 1.62 rings. There's 162. Where does that put me? Yeah, I like it. Hitting it perfect. In the hole. Woo! In the hole. All right. I played that totally wrong. I think I think now after looking at it, I could have swore that we had a little bit bigger window there with a three power ball, but now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, I think I was bringing out like a four, but I think starting off with just a berserker, that way you got a little teeny bit of a window there. You don't need a, a bunch. You want to leave yourself, like I think I'd maybe get myself maybe one ring. So we got rough right here and I would give myself one ring on the back side, maybe two rings. Two rings over here on the right from that side, but only one ring in the back. And play it with a five power ball. That gives me as much distance as I can in the front. So if there was a headwind, I could try and pull the wind out. And just start off with a five power ball. So let me, let me make a note here. Hold number three is a par five. Par five. And I'm gonna play it with a APOC. And it looked like I did like three topspin, three topspin, and a five power ball. And plus 20. We'll start with plus 20 and see, see how the week goes. And I will tell you that the side that I was on over there blows. That side blows. Blows. And... And you can see Ego here has got the same shit going. These, th these, those two par fours that we've played so far, we don't have to make them, but we have to make them. Hole number five. Hole number five. And we're not done. And of all the par three, I, I dislike this par three. <sighs> Which way is the wind blowing? It seems like the wind's blowing from this direction, so it's better to over pull it when because if you under pull it, you, the sand's in the way if you want to hit from over here. You can hit from the top over here and try and run it down, or you can start off right here and try and backspin it up there. The backspin shot is pretty, pretty iffy. I think if you really, really want to go for it, you need to start over here and bring it around. Let's try it with a katana. A katana. A katana. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Let's make sure I have some katanas. Let's make sure I have at least a little selection of them. Select it. I'm going to take that bag. And we're roll 1.2 times whatever the wind is. I have no idea where what there's three there's kind of three different areas that you could shoot this at, and I'm not sure. I think I think I think I think what I'm gonna do is go at it from the left hand side. I think if you want to hit from the up front on the right. I think you have to bring out a bigger power ball. I think you have to play it with like a kingmaker in order to get to the spot. Like if you wanted to play it from this area right here, I think you have to bring out, well, maybe not. They got a zero power ball or a one power ball and they're almost there. So Katana would probably get me in that spot. And I, I just hate being that close. My opponent's only got two side spins. So they have, they have to get a little closer or they have to put some curl on it or something. thing about being that close is if you're less than if and with that wind if you may if you hit a great to the right you're going to end up in the sand right there and the worst the worst going on a par four and not getting the eagle and just getting your birdie you know if you get in trouble on a par four you can recover on the second shot and get up there and still get your birdie but on a par three man you screw that drive up and you're done and there's just no recovering from that I mean, you could get lucky and make a whole bunch of other shots and, and, and still do good in the tournament, but that is brutal. 
brutal sniper I got plenty of room I use I like to play from right here where you just center it up but I'm gonna play from over here let's see what we can get let's see if I can get let's see if I can get close without having to be I'm almost two rings off. I'm almost going at it. 3.6. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a max pull, four three two. There's four three two. Hitting it perfect. And it did roll out. It, it's going downhill right there. So with a, with that wind, I figured it would roll out a little bit. I think maybe bringing out... I kind of liked where I was at in the club, but maybe bringing out a four side spin ball so that you've got a little bit more side spin so you can separate yourself from that sand just a little bit. And I did a 20 on there, but I'm not sure if I should have did a 20 plus 0.1 or 2 or if that was just the angle of how where I was at, but that's definitely worth a... Uh, I think if you really, really wanted to go for that, bringing out a bigger side spin ball would probably be be a bigger ticket. Hole number four, five. What hole was that? That was hole number five. I think bringing out a four side spin ball. So I got a sniper and like a one or a two power four side spin. You might be able to get up there and I did a plus 20 there. I would want to bring out the right the right ball and try it with plus 20 again just to see where it put me but like bring out a four side spin ball so that we can see what the deal is. And what was hole number? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. What was hole number 4 again? Uh, I wrote I wrote those wrong those down wrong. This is actually hole number four, and I missed hole number three. Okay, we're on hole number six. I'm taking notes, and I already screwed my notes up. All right, all right, all right. I actually like to play right here, and if you come out here with a three power ball on a tailwind day, you can get over into that area. You can also play pretty easily over to this area and you have a lot of options, but I, I kind of like this angle a little bit better. And you can get, I think you can get a little bit closer to the cup if you draw the arc, you're within. I think over here you're in long iron and over here you can get into short iron. Which way's the wind blowing? That'll make our decision for us. And that wind and the side I like to hit on if I can get into this zone over here, then I've got the wind going with me. So I've got probably not a pure tailwind to the cup, but more of a tailwind to the cup. I'm going to take a Kingmaker. I'm going to take a Titan. All right, I'll take a Titan. And I'm going to take my number five bag. The number five bag. And I don't think I need to put on all the topspin here. I think you just need to put on, I'm not sure, I think it's an overpower shot. If you bring out a bigger ball, I'm not sure if you'd have to do overpower. I think you still would. Let's see. On the fairway. They'll have a nice clean shot from there. I think if you do that shot though, I'm not sure whether or not there's six, six top spin. Where's my second bounce? Just barely over. I'm gonna do seven topspin. I don't know, that might be too far. 
that might bleed me out too far, but we'll try that. And I'm going to give myself just a little teeny bit more room over here, and then I'm going to lean to the right. Two, two. Two rings is two, six. I'm going to do two rings. And I'm going to lean just a little. Oh, fuck. I'll run out of fairway. It wasn't making it over that I was going about. It was that you can make it, but the, the course is going like this. So if you're hitting here, you're going to run out of fairway sooner than if you're out here. you got a much bigger room. That's why I was putting on the right hand. The right hand curl to try and give myself an area where I had more length. I think with a five power ball, I might have just been able to get over without any overpower. Possibly. Possibly. I'm going to do a straight up shot wherever I'm at my club. I still got a great opportunity to make this. Ooh! Let's see where I am and my Spitfire. Wow. There's Max. There's mid. So I'm a mid Spitfire. It's I play my mid Spitfire at four per ring. I possibly could do a rough bump right here. Do I have enough top spin? No. New. No. Four per ring, 3.3 .3 divided by four. Straight up, it's 0.82 of a ring. There's five, there's seven, five, there's eight, two. Hitting it perfect, get in the hole. Oh, just missed it, just missed it. And it did seem like on this hole that we were doing zero plus point one or where it was doing a slight adjustment like that. Just a slight one. You have to leave a comment. If go go watch the video that I put up for the zero wind adjustment and let me know if you understand that. And if you want me to explain it a little bit better. But like the elevation or the wind stuff is all all BS. Where it affects us with wind is if we get a, the bigger the wind, especially if it's fractional stuff, we might have to add. That's why the we may not want to represent it as a percentage where we're doing like a 15%. It might be a 10% plus 0.3 depending on the wind, but if the wind's lower, if we had like a five mile an hour wind, it might be plus two, and if we had a three mile an hour wind, it might be plus one. <laughs> and I've had that happen when Denner and I have played together where we're playing, it's like, hey, if the wind's over, over 3.8, we're gonna add on 0.2, and if it's less, we're gonna add on 0.1. Hole number seven, hole number seven. Let me make a note here on six. I really think a bigger power ball. So APOC. And I'm trying to get in a Kingfisher range. If you've got a lower developed Kingfisher, you want to you don't want to bring your Kingfisher there. You'll probably be in between clubs, depending on what ball you bring. But if you've got an upper developed Kingfisher, it does gain a little bit of distance and it should be fine. And I'm gonna say we need to bring a bigger power ball. And I'm going to do 0 plus 0 0.1. All right. Hole number 7. What is hole number 7? 10, 10. The duck shot. And I have hit from over here quite a few times. And I've almost always done plus 10 if I'm going over here. And I have done 10 to the cup. And I've made quite a bit of eagles from over here and one-on-one -on -one doing that. But if the wind is blowing right today, I'm going to go from this area and try and go for the go for the green 
phrase the wind blow on that wind will work 1.1 times whatever the wind is and I'm gonna bring out a berserker berserker I think I think we still have to do overpower even with five power ball. I'm pretty sure maybe 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 s and t silly man here we go i go first of course i go first okay we're almost in the zone almost i'm doing four top spin there I need just a titch of curl, just a titch, 4.5, 3.8, and I really kind of like to be like one ring forward, so it's 3.8 rings, there's 3.8, and then I'm going to push it forward on that track, one ring, that gets me into that wider area, with a little teeny bit of curl. Hitting it perfect. Too much curl. Too much. A little teeny bit, and that was too much. Still got a great shot from there, but I will have to hit it perfect. I will have to. I like the landing zone, though. If the ball hadn't hit the rough, I think the speed that I had on there was about right. Four top spin. APOC. Power five. Four top spin. Rub. Curl. I didn't put a lot of curl on there, but however much I put on there was too much. If my tick marks down here, I think I was on the green one. And that was way too much. Way too much. My opponent's going to be on. Nice. Nice. Got a pretty good area back there, and it's going uphill, so the ball's slowing down. But you got a pretty good area. It, it's You really have to smack it in order to end up in the rough. You can end up in that sand, but... Uh, you do have a little bit of an area down there to land. I'm going to go right there, and we just need to hit this perfect. Hitting it perfect. In the hole! Woo! Look at that. All right. All right. I guess I'm going to qualify today since I, I've i made three. So, missed that mid. Did I miss one of the par fours? I think I missed the mid par four. I missed. It seems like I missed one of them. But I made that hole in one. The luck hole in one that I was going 7,000 miles an hour and barely, barely hit the rough. Most important part of a rough bump is hitting the rough. <laughs> Second most important part of a rough bump, getting out of the rough. <laughs> end hole, end hole, end hole. All right. Plus 10. Hole number eight. What is... What is hole number eight? Yeah, the scores at the top are going to be monstrous. This is going to be one of those weeks where you're going to have to pick up shit. You're probably going to have to pick up five on a side. Ah, oh, this is another rough bump right here. Which way's the wind blowing? And we got a headwind. And I think I'm going to practice this hole once because I believe there's a, a red line issue. 
depending on what ball you bring out. So you really want to know, you really want to know what to bring out on the hole. And I believe that this is with a sniper. And this is another one of those holes that I think we were doing like, with, that we were doing like a 10% plus, plus something. Like, just a slight adjustment. Okay, where are we at here? I definitely don't need to bring a five power ball. Maybe I do. Three power ball. So got my red line there. Two power ball. I am in practice. I want to make sure. Okay, I got plenty of room. There's men. There's Max, so there's about mid club. So I'm about mid club with a katana. Let's see what we got with a quasar here. I think a quasar will put me dead center mid. Okay, there's men. There's Max. Okay, quasar. 2.6, and I'm gonna and at mid club it's 1.1. So I'm gonna do whatever the wind is. Whatever the wind is, that's what I'm gonna do. With a quasar. Now you would think if my opponent's practicing, like they may be practice, they may already know what ball they want. Like they've got a Titan. Do they really want to play with a Titan? Or like, hey, I just watched like watch your opponent when you're practicing. Nobody wants to practice. They're just out here playing. I mean, you don't need to bring out a Titan. I just showed you that you could if, from where they're hitting it. They have plenty of room in front of them with the, with a one power ball. And they're at mid club, so it should be 2.5, and that was about 2.5. Perfecto. Okay, whatever the wind is, that's how many rings I'm going to pull. I was going to add on 10, and it's at 1.1 at mid. Give myself two rings of separation. And that's three and a titch of top spin. Three and a titch and almost one side spin. Let's make that one full side spin. And three and a titch. And I'll move that. Get it right on the cup. 2.6 rings. 2.6. There's two six. That might have been two six and a half. Hitting it perfect. Boom. See if my distance is good. Distance is good. And I over pulled it by just a little. And I did over pull it just a little, but I'm not sure I over pulled it. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the sniper quasar. One to one minus point one. Alright. Alright. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it longer. Let's make sure that ball's picked. Quasar, do I got a quasar picked? I got a quasar picked. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. One to one, minus point one. And I did one full right side spin and three and a quarter top spin. Three and a sliver, three and a quarter, three and something. Okay, one, one, two, three, and a sliver. No, I must have did one of the other. The space vehicle's home. 3.1 ranks. The dogs will start barking here any second. One, two, three, and I'm going to take off one, so I'm just going to do three straight up. 
Getting it perfect. Get in the hole. Get in. Oh, look at that. There you go. There you have it. JJ's turn. Minus point 0.1. And that was still just a little fast. And I did run my ball guide through. I'm surprised that it ran through there so fast, but uh, maybe not running my ball guide quite as quite through the hole. It seemed like, and I don't necessarily know that I want to leave it short, but maybe right to the cup. And I have been on this hole quite a few times where I've ended up right on the lip where the speed, the speed on this is definitely a deal. Definitely a deal. Definitely, definitely, definitely. All right, all right, hole number nine. What is, what is hole number nine? These little pictures do nothing for me. Okay, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm remembering it now. I'm remembering it. Okay, 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 okay. The goal here is to get over here and take this shot. There is a rough bump that you can do along this line. And which way is the wind blowing? The problem with that wind is this when you go to do the rough bump on the other end over here if you've got a wind that's blowing from this direction and you're setting up your rough bump here you're involving the wind so if if you can set up over here you can pull and you can still engage this but in order to do that you'll probably need a bigger side spin ball in order to get to the cup So bringing out a ball that's got at least three sides but it might be helpful. It might be helpful to bring out a ball that's got even more. Question is getting over here. I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it right now. You guys are going to get some bonus content here. I'm going to go... Let's look at ball inventory first. Let's think about ball inventory. Let's think about what we got. What do we have? I'm... I'm it's too pinned. Okay, I'm I'm gonna practice this one time. I'm gonna I'm gonna practice, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm I keep threatening the last seventy times that we played this because we played these Sunshine Glade holes. I don't know how many times in tournaments. It doesn't seem like as we've played them as much over the last couple of years. But the first three or four years that the game was out there, it was like, damn, it was it was almost every other tournament. If you've played for a long, long time, you've played these Sunshine Glade holes so much that you're sick of them. If they never put Sunshine Glades in a tournament again, none of, none of us that have played for a long time would miss miss it. But I keep threatening that I'm going to do a max. I want to try a max overpower hook shot from over here. And let's bring out a Titan. What kind of distance does that give me? What does that give me? Can I get? Can I even get over there? Hell no, I can't get over there. Let's bring out a. Let's bring out a berserker. There we go. Okay. I'm th now what I'm looking at here is the angle of this from where I'm setting up. So like extrapolating, like how many rings? Like right there, I'm two rings off from that rough area. If I did max curl, can I avoid that sand? Because think about the arc on this shot right here for your second bounce. So four, five, if I add on 10, that's five. There's one, two, three, four, five. Hitting it perfect. Now with a ball that has more side spin and maybe some top spin boost, because I really didn't leave myself on the first bounce. I didn't leave myself a lot of room over here. And so, like, if I wanted to get it to go more up into this area, I really, there's not much I can do about that. But if I brought out a ball that had top spin, and I only put on two side spin, I'm looking at, you know, I might, I probably end up in the sand. What I'd really like is to give myself three rings over here. 
on that first bounce, excuse me, to give myself a little bit more separation. It'll open that angle up. It'll make the side spin more effective. It gives me more room for that to get around the band and run up towards the top. I'm going to do 10%. So 3.7 times 1.1 divided by... Where am I at in my club? That's a good question. There's max. There's man. There's about mid. So mid club is 1.1. So it's 3.7. 3.7. I don't know if this club's got enough tops. It does. It does. It does. It does. Three point one rings, or three, excuse me, three point seven rings. Just gonna do the wind. There's three seven. Oh fuck! And then I hit it great. Arr, matey. I like where it came in though. I think, I think, I think, I think it would have missed it. If I'd hit it perfect, it would have it would have rolled along this edge, and I would have missed it on the other side just barely. It might be it might be because I'm in where I was at. I was in mid club. It might be wherever you're at in your club plus ten percent plus point one. Let's try that. We'll try it. We will. I'm not sure that the max over. I think that you could do a max over power hook shot up there, but I don't know that you'd net anything more. It, it, sometimes when you do the max over power hook, you can get around corners a little bit better, but I'm not sure. If you've got lower developed stuff and you bring in a power five ball, I'm not sure that you're going to get any more distance than if you just try and hit it straight with a... I'm not sure. The thing about hitting those types of shots is, is it's hard to be in a consistent spot on the, sec on the second shot. Like one time you'll be in one spot and the next time you'll be in a slightly different spot. And it, it's all... It looks to me like that you'll be in a different angle... Let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. What are my power five options? What do I have one of? Not seeing anything that I like anything better than the just using the berserker. The zero power balls, there's a there's a couple holes in the game that is really important to have. Like you need the distance and you need top spin boost will help you big time. Big, big, big time. But if you don't have a top spin boost ball, those those balls with uh, zero wind so that you can use all of the wind will help you on any day that you have a tailwind obviously they're not going to help you on a headwind day but on you could use those balls on a on a tailwind day and you could switch to a top spin boost ball on a headwind day i'm just going to use the berserker i will just use the berserker all right 1.1 times whatever the wind is divided by 1.3 I think with a five power ball, it might be 1.2 with that APOC, but I'm going to do 1.3. I don't like being two rings off on a max overpower shot like that because if you hit the ball one ring, I mean, it's so easy to be two rings off on one side or the other and you can end up clipping the rough right there. And if you clip the rough on that first bounce and end up on that side, you are screwed. Like if I hit this great to the left, I'm fine. But if I hit it great to the right, I'm in, I'm in big ass trouble. I prefer on those to leave myself three rings when I'm doing max curl.
right. All right. Let's turn the game off and we'll fire it back up again. Screw you then. Screw you. Screw you, man. What's the deal? My wife comes home and all of a sudden the internet stops working. I know why it did that. It did that so that I would go up here and, and clear out a slot. Because you never want to play without an empty slot. What do I got one in? In one game, hit a successful, perfect putt. All right. Let's see if we can do that. Let's not have to hit a putt. Continue. Continue. Well, number nine. Here we go. The Kings of Golf. Groot Root. Groot. My name is Groot. I go first. I go first. I'm going to give myself two and a half rings. I'm going to give myself just a little teeny bit of leeway down there. 3.7, which means my landing area on the other side will be bad. It's 3.13 rings. There's three, one, three exactly. Getting it perfect. I think I actually got a little bit more distance. My angle is definitely where I was at before. I, my angle was a little bit more so I could take that shot on the side. So up there by the green where it comes around like this and I was able to take the shot here and then bring it back around to the cup because I was out here, but now I'm over here. I think I got a little bit more distance. So it's gonna be, I'll need more side spin in order to get to the cup if I don't want to pull over the sand. Whatever the wind is, plus point one. One to one, plus point one. They will still have a great shot from right there, but that's definitely going to be sniper. And they're in the right angle. See what I'm saying? That view. So 3.2 rings. Can I get up there? Do I have enough room? Do I have enough room? That's the question. I do. I do. Barely. 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 3.2 rings. Here's 3. 2. Isn't it perfect? In the hole! Woo! So I was in mid club. Which is 1.1 per ring. And I was going to add on 10%, so that balances out. And then I added on 0.1. So I did the win plus 0.1. So that means like on their fractional math, we were 3.4, 3.4 miles per hour, and I had to add on 0.1. So that means that it that their variable here is, because we did 10% is 1.33, or excuse me, it's 0.133 is the variable that they're using for zero wind. So if there was, if there was a zero wind and I took that shot and I hit it and I did an, a perfect wind adjustment, I would have missed it. If I zero wind, you don't have to make a wind adjustment. I would have missed it by 1.33 rings or 0.133. Do you understand how that works? Am I, am, let me know if that's making sense. All right, there we go. That's why I'm saying I, that is a, 
Okay, so you can see the shots that I made right there, and there was a couple shots that I missed that could have, you know, like, that I missed on it. This is going to be an absolutely wild-ass tournament. Wild-ass tournament. I'm surprised that there's only 16s. I'm surprised that somebody else is in at 18. Missing hole number five. What was hole number five? That must be a par three. Yeah. By getting an eagle on those. We've got lots of opportunities. We have to make the first hole. And the second hole is definitely hole in one of them. Definitely. And I think that that it's I, I got super lucky on that one. I'm gonna have to go back and re either I was we went back and watched the replay and I might have been two rings off and I, I think maybe I need to be three just to give myself the room so that I guarantee I'm hitting in the rough. But that's definitely a hole in one of a hole. And hole number three, this is a tough hole just because of when you're coming into it, how this, how the green, you know, because the green is all sloping down in this direction. And so the ball's wanting to drift off and you, it seems like you're, you know, no matter which way you're going to go at it, you know, it's easy to get, well, at least these two, it's easy to get into these two spots. So you have a perfect shot at the green where you're going to do the rough bump or you're just going to go straight at it. But the, but the way the green is designed and the topography of the green, it's, it's just like it forces the ball off trajectory. I, these two areas right here, especially this, I, I haven't hit to this area as many times, but if you can get over here, you definitely are in the catbird seat. And if you get the bounces right, you could actually get on the green. And this shot over here is one of those things where I think I was doing like a plus 10, plus 0 0.1. There was a, there was a percentage adjustment and then uh, just tweaking it, the little micro adjustment to make up for the fractions. And I have made several from this, but this is not a gimme hole. And, and, and it is also possible to get in some trouble here. If you tank this drive shot and end up in the sand or end up shanking this shot and not giving yourself enough room, it'll bounce straight over and you end up, you can end up in a little bit of trouble here. If you try and go for this and end up getting caught in this rough, you're, you could be in some trouble. The thing about going this way, if you go over here, your worst case scenario is you get caught in the rough or you overshoot it and you get caught in the rough over here. And typically going in either one of these two spots, you know, your worst case scenario is you're in the sand or you end up overshooting it in the rough. Back here is not really good, but almost all of those spots, at least you have a chance to recover. But taking the shot to try and go over here, you could get screwed with and end up in the drink. And getting way off trajectory that's not a gimme but it it is a possibility that one right there we have to get there's there's three at least that we've got let's go back and look at that one yeah there's three at least in the first four holes that we have a serious opportunity to pick up a shot on and the two bar fours you have to get this is not the easiest par three but i think we can work this out from over here and try and bring it around but i I think what what's different here now than what we've had in the past is that we've got four side spin balls and with the four side spin ball you can give yourself a little bit more separation it's really hard with a three side spin ball you get really close to this so if you're in such a situation that especially with the way the wind was blowing today if you make a bad wind adjustment and then you hit the ball to the right you're in the sand and if you're way back in here and you make a bad adjustment you can end up clipping this up here and you're in the sand and so trying to get up here a little bit more so that your your bounce your your second bounce is like in this area so the sand is completely taken out of play in order to get around the bend having to bring out a four side spin ball um, so that you can get a run at it i think i think we could do the deal plus what would happen too if you brought out a bigger side spin ball is you could give yourself a little bit more separation so that when the wind's blowing from this direction you don't have to pull over that sand you could give yourself at least a little bit of leeway we do have we do have a shot on that. If we practice that hole, we I think we could work it out. This hole right here, we have a serious opportunity, but if what no matter what, it's going to be from distance. So whether you're shooting it from up here, or you're shooting it from here, which are pretty much the two ways that we play it in tournament. In one on one play, we're almost always playing from here and just take the shot. But in tournament play, we can get a little bit closer. Um, this is going to be working out that wind, and I, and I. I think maybe the zero and then it's like a plus 0.1 or it's going to be a little micro adjustment here 
on that second shot. But we have a serious opportunity on that. So that there's four out of the first six that we have serious opportunities on, like serious opportunities. This hole right here is a make or break. If you're using this spot right here to try and get on, if you're on a one, you got a pretty easy, easy situation. Um, but if you take this and you miss it, you're gonna be in the sand. Over here, you got a pretty consistent shot. It's super easy to get over here. And one-on-one -on -one play, I almost always play over here unless I get some monster wind where I can get this. But the thing about it is, is that you can get caught up in the water if you if you miss this to the to the left, you can end up getting caught in the water. So in one-on-one -on -one play, I almost always play from over here. And then just take the shot coming back up to the cup. But we have a serious opportunity on that. So there's five out of the first seven. This one right here, we got a serious opportunity for hole in one. There's there's six out of the first eight. And we do have a we do have a shot. We can't put ourselves in a position here. So this this tournament's gonna be crazy. I mean, we've got six holes that aren't necessarily easy, but we got six holes where we have serious opportunities. Six, seven holes, seven holes out of the first out of the out of nine. So, you know, shit, if you shot a if 12 is the minimum score and you pick up seven, you're at 19, you're at 38 in rookie. So like what the hell is the scores that, I mean, we're talking what in masters it'll be, you have to shoot a 42 in order to win. And then you'll be in a tiebreaker, a tiebreaker tie deal. It's going to be a crazy week. Crazy week. Crazy, I tell you. Crazy. crazy this probably wouldn't be a bad week to play pro because i think in pro there's enough of these holes that that uh what it'll be is it'll all be about ball so depending on and even here in rookie to get into some of those situations i think there was at least three or four of those holes that i was bringing out of berserker so if you're playing in pro and if you think about it if you got four holes and you're playing those holes five times that's 20 berserkers how you go through in one week just just playing it so there you have it that was the uh qualifying round for the what the hell tournament is that that's the solar state the solar states tournament thanks for watching have a great week stay safe and i will see you on the next one